Hi, I'm Joe James. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use hash maps in Java. Now, hash maps are a very important and useful data structure. They offer a number of advantages. They offer extremely fast performance for locating values given a key, uh, much faster than binary search trees or lists or anything else like that. They're also extremely useful for storing key value pairs. A lot of times you need to store items as a key value pair. Now, the value could be an object. It doesn't necessarily need to be a number, but you could use strings, integers, um, or any type of object, really, as the key and the value. In this video, I'll teach you how to create a hash map, how to add items to it, locate items, get access to the keys, the values, iterate the hash map, etc. All the useful functions you're going to need to use like hash maps in your Java programming. And I'll give you all the code as usual. It'll all be posted on my GitHub site. I'll put the link down below in the comments so you can download the code and try it out on your own computer. So we have a few imports here. We need to import these classes to start out because we're going to use these in uh, throughout our program. So please put these imports in. Uh, pre preferably just use my code off my GitHub site and keep these imports there. Now we're going to set up initialize a hash map here in the first example and we're going to use that same hash map for the next 10 examples. So item number one here is going to stay on the screen for the next 10 examples. We're going to keep that there. So we're going to create a hash map. We're going to add four key value pairs to it. Our hash map name is going to be ages. That's going to be the name of our variable. And we're going to have a string and an integer, string for the key, integer for the pair. You can use whatever you want, whatever type of object you want. You can't use an int, but you can use an integer, uh, string, uh, boolean, uh, or an object if you like. You want to use uh, the map interface on the left side of the equals sign here, map interface, string, integer, and then on the right hand, we're going to say new hash map because we want the object that we're creating to be a hash map with string and integer type for the keys and values. Uh, you also have the option of passing in an integer for initializing the size of the hash map. Uh, we, if we want 100 capacity or 1,000 capacity, if you know how much data you're going to be using this hash map for, you can initialize it to the, the amount of data that you're going to have, right? Maybe with a little bit of a buffer. Uh, and that will save the hash map from a lot of behind the scenes work of having to double in size and rehash everything every time you, you grow your data set. So as you add values, keys and values to it, the hash map needs to do a lot of behind the scenes work to scale automatically to the size of your data. But it won't need to do that if you tell it initially how much data you have. So if you say you have 100 keys and values, now I only have Four, four or five or six examples here, pieces of data in our example set. So I, I didn't pass in anything. I think the default is probably like size of 20. So that's not an issue, but it will help your performance a little bit if you can tell how much data you're going to use in the constructor. You can pass in an integer. So to add values, keys and value pairs to our hash map, we just use put. We use the put method ages.put and we pass in a string for the key and a, an integer for the value. And we, here we're going to add key value pairs for Avni 11, Bing 12, Cassie 13, and Devarshi 14. So we now have four items, four key value pairs in our hash map. And we should be able to print those out. If we just print out ages, we can print out the whole hash map. So let's jump to over here to the command line. We can compile that and run it. And you see the hash map that we print out is divarsh equals 14. Now what's interesting here is we added them in alphabetical order, A, B, C, D. However, when they print out, they don't necessarily print out in alphabetical order because this is not an ordered list. Hash maps don't guarantee you the order that they'll be in. So they, they are going to be in random order. So don't count on ordered hash maps, okay? That's, that's uh, the hash maps are not ordered data structures. But let's go ahead and look at the second example. In the second example, we're going to get an item from the map. So we just created a map with four items in it. We printed it out. This is called ages. 
Now we're going to get an item from the map, and really all we have to do is ages.get, and then we pass in the key, and it will get us the value. So our print statement is, uh, I'm going to print the key that I already know, and then we're going to use ages.get to get the value, and we'll print that as well. And then guess what? We're going to also try and print out something that's not there. Frank is not in our hash map. Or we can also add a default using the instead of just get method, we use get or default. In other words, if it doesn't find Frank in the hash map as a key, it's going to return zero as the value. So let's compile this and run it. So you see it prints Frank zero and Cassie 13. It did find Cassie, but it did not find Frank, so it gave us back this default value that it defaults to zero. So you have the option of using a default value using the get or default. In the third example, we're just going to check for membership. We want to test whether or not an item is in the hash map. And we can check either contains key or contains value. We can check both of those. So we have two different methods for doing that in the hash map class. And for the key, contains key, since we have our key is a string, we're going to pass in a string, the name. And for uh, contains value, uh, our values are integers, so we just pass in an integer. And our return from this, in both cases, is going to be a Boolean return. It's either going to be true or false. So we can see, does it contain key Avni? True. Does it contain value 23? False. So it's easy to test uh, the membership, whether or not uh, these items are contained in the hash map. In the fourth example, we're going to remove an item from the list. So here we have ages.remove, and then we pass in a key, Bing, so we can remove the key value pair with the key of Bing from the list. The second remove example is a little different. We put in both a key and a value. What do you think the, this method will do? Is it going to remove Devarshi even though we have the age wrong? The age is supposed to be 14, but we put in Devarshi 41. Well, what this method is going to do is it's going to look and see if it finds Devarshi 41, and if it doesn't, then it does nothing. So in this case, the second remove is not going to do anything. So when we run this, you can see it did not remove Devarshi 14, because it didn't match the age. We got the age wrong. So if you want to verify only if Devarshi has the correct age of 41, then remove it, otherwise leave it alone. That's basically what it's doing in this case. But if you just pass in a key as your argument for the remove function, it's going to remove that key value pair regardless what the value is. Now, if you want to get the size of the map, the number of items in it, number of key value pairs that are contained in it, you can just use ages.size. So here we see the number of items in this hash map is 4. Now let's say we want to remove all the items from a hash map. How do we do that? Well, we just use the clear method. Ages.clear will remove everything from the map. And then if we want to test whether or not that map is empty, there is also a Boolean method called isEmpty. We can say ages.isEmpty and it will return either true or false depending on whether it's empty or not. Since we just cleared it, we removed every item from the hash map. The hash map object is still alive but there are no items in it. And then we'll put in a couple items like using the put method. We'll add in Elena 15 and Frank 16, and then we can print out ages, and we should just have two items in it at that point. So when we compile this and run it, we see that we get empty map equals true, and yes, we only have Frank 16 and Elena 15 in the map now. In example number seven, we're going to look at conditional add and replace. 
So we have two different methods in the hash map that allow us to do conditional adds and replace. Put if absent, in other words, if George is not in the hash map yet, let's add him in. And we can also see what happens if we say put if absent when we add Elena in. What if she's already there? Oh, guess what? Let's do this. Ages dot put, and then we'll add in Elena. And let's make her 44. And so now we've added Elena, and we want to test how ages dot put if absent works when Elena is already in there but with a different age. Is it going to overwrite it or what? So let's print that out and see what happens. And then we also have this ages.replace. Ages.replace is going to take a key and the old value and replace that with the new value. So since George is indeed 23, we added him right here. George is indeed 23, it will replace his age with 17. However, if ages.replace is looking for George 44 and replace that with 55, it's not going to find it because George is now 17. So in other words, this line is basically not going to execute. It tests whether George is equal to 44, and if so, it will update it to 55. But George is actually 17, so it does nothing. It does not replace. So it's a conditional replace. So these are two different conditional statements for add and replace. And here we're going to see what happens. It prints out um, George 23 and Elena 44. And in the second one, George is 17, Elena is 44. So the put if absent Elena 5 did not work. Since Elaine was already in the hash map as 44, put if absent Elaine 5 did not work. It didn't do anything since it already found an Elena there. And the conditional replaces, yeah, the first one worked because George was 23, so it changed his age to 17, but the second one didn't do anything because it didn't find an, a, a George age 44, so it did not update his age. Now in the next example, we'll get a collection of values. The key value pairs, the second item is the value. How do we get just a list of those values, right? Well, we can get a collection of the values, which is kind of similar to a list. Uh, we have a print statement here, ages.values, very simple. And we see just a collection of the values. Again, these are not ordered, so we don't really know which value corresponds to which person. Next few examples are going to take a look at how to iterate through the key value pairs of a hash map. So there are a few different ways to do this, um, and really depending on what you want to do inside this, uh, whether you want to use a loop or what. So one way is just using a standard enhanced for loop to iterate through the keys. And using that key, you can use ages.get, pass in the key as an argument, and get the value back. We use an enhanced for loop, string key, uh, in ages.keyset. Keyset is going to return each one of the keys uh, one at a time. And then we'll print that key, and then we use ages.get to get the value. This is probably the simplest way to iterate through the key value pairs of a hash map. And you can see it iterates through, but not in any particular order, but it does iterate through and it prints out the uh, key and the value of each item. Instead of just iterating through the keys, this example iterates through the key value pairs using map entry and entry set. So entry set basically is going to return a key value pair. And it's going to assign to this variable here, pair, and then we can use pair.getKey, pair.getValue. And when we run that, we can see we get basically the same result. It's just a different way to iterate through them. And our last example 
iterates through the key value pairs of the hash map using Java 8 Streams API. So I have another video actually that covers in detail the use of Java 8 Streams, but this nice little example here shows you using the dot .stream of an entry set. Uh, you can apply a for each function and use a pair. So each time through this, it's essentially a loop or a stream, uh, you get a pair. And then we're, we have a print statement. We use pair.getKey, pair.getValue. It's kind of doing a similar thing as we did in example number 10, but this is using a Java 8 stream API format. And when we run that, we can see the same result. We get um, the same four key value pair entries. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.